these are the functions of the kidney to keep the water balance and to keep electrolyte balance sodium potassium chloride bicarb acid base balance is is important and the removal of the nitrogenous waste material like urea and creatinine kidney has got also endocrine function like activation of the vitamin d that is vitamin d3 125 dihydroxycol calciferol and it has got important function to produce the hormone that is called erythropoietin this erythropoietin hormone cause erythropoiesis that cause increased production of the red blood cells so when the kidneys are affected the patient become anemic due to erythropoietin deficiency or due to vitamin d deficiency mineral bone disease takes place or renal osteodystrophies takes place so dialysis is the basically there is the dia means through lysis means a filtration through the semi permeable membrane basically it is a greek word there are various types of the dialysis one is hemodialysis hemodialysis heme means blood dialysis means filtration of blood means solutes and extra water is removed and again reentered in the body it is also called the artificial kidney apd is called acute peritoneal dialysis this peritoneal dialysis indicated in the acute renal failure or in the acute conditions it is a temporary dialysis other form is capd continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis basically this dialysis indicated in end stage renal disease when the patient require permanent hemodialysis or renal transplant either patient put on the capd or maintenance hemodialysis regular dialysis in capd this uh, in with the tench cap catheter inserted in the peritoneal cavity and by peritoneal solution where a session of dialysis has been conducted to remove the solutes and the extra water it is also home dialysis continuous ambulatory patient can walk other form of the hemodialysis is dialysis is a part which is usually applied in the icu patients in critical care units when the patient develop acute kidney injury that is called crrt continuous renal replacement therapy in which the 20 to 24 hours or 12 hours dialysis takes place slowly with low blood flow because in case of other form of dialysis like in the hemodialysis machine so patient hypotension can occur but in crrt this is another separate machine in which hypotension doesn't takes place so these are the various form of the dialysis now coming to the indication of the dialysis whatever the dialysis either hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis so the indications are the uremic syndrome uremic syndrome when the uh, nitrogenous waste material present in the blood and cause the uh, uremia means a uh, patient can become drowsy persistent vomiting uremic symptoms 
so then it is indicated or when potassium is high it is acute emergency hyperkalemia or severe acidosis or pulmonary edema fluid overload is pulmonary edema so we should not challenge the pulmonary edema due to renal origin because always these patients require the dialysis uremic pericarditis not uh, another viral or bacterial pericarditis but is due to uremia sometime pericarditis can develop in these patients so dialysis should be done in these patients then the chronic dialysis which is done in case of end stage renal disease end stage renal disease are those patients in which the creatinine clearance is less than 10 ml per minute when the patient develop end stage renal disease whatever the cause we should do the either maintenance hemodialysis or renal transplant other indications of the dialysis like drug intoxication hypothermia hypercalcemia and metabolic alkalosis related contraindication to dialysis therapy do these patient require dialysis but there are relative contraindication like in old age dementia multi infarct dementia alzheimer disease or hrs hypotonal syndrome or advanced malignancy advanced cirrhosis with encephalopathy now what are the principles on which dialysis act there are some physiological principles of the dialysis basically dialysis is a process where the solute composition of solution a is altered by exposing solution a to second solution b through a semi permeable mem- membrane so the mechanism of solute transport depend on the diffusion and ultra filtration gradient so concentration and diffusion depend upon the molecular weight of the substance and membrane resistance ultra filtration means removal of the water when patient in pulmonary edema ultra filtration depend upon the hydrostatic pressure pressure and the osmotic pressure so these are the physiological aspect regarding the dialysis now coming to the what are the apparatus of hemodialysis because hemodialysis for hemodialysis setup should be present in the hospital there should be dialysis hall and RO system various dialysis machines dialyzer water for dialysis treatment that is uh, uh, purified water and dialysis solution and dialysis machine these are the components of the hemodialysis if you see the this is the dialyzer so there are in case of uh, end stage renal disease the patient who is on dialysis maintain uh, av fistula arteriovenous fistula is formed there are two lines arterial line and venous line okay so blood goes from the uh, from the arterial line and move from the venous line here the suction pump pump and from ro there is water conductivity temperature and these are the concentration so these are the various component of the dialyzers this is slide shows the arterial line and the venous line this picture of our patient in our department of nephrology jpmc 
she's on dialysis uh, this is a practical patient uh, and it's a renal disease you see on the side hemodialysis machine and two lines arterial line one two clusters and venous line after that i already said purified water water for dialysis treatment because each patient is exposed about 120 liter of water during each dialysis treatment and small molecular weight sufficient present the water so it is important to purify the water the contaminant which are present in the water these are aluminum copper chloramine if you can't purify the water by ro system the bone disease anemia and progress in neurological deterioration may occur so aluminum can cause and copper can cause the hemolytic anemia chloramine it is a chemically that frequently used to control the bacterial contaminant of water sometime it also can lead to this is uh, uh, complications during the dialysis so now what are the methods of the purifying the water ro system we heard the, this ro system which is installed even in the good setup of the, in the apartments or uh, because the function of this is to purify the water it will remove more than 90% the impurities after the purification of water we need the dialysis solution for the dialysis there are two types of the dialysis solution one is acetate other is the bicarbonate nowadays acetate is replaced by bicarbonate the beauty of bicarbonate it does not cause the hypotension and it does not cause the nausea vomiting the acetate can cause the vasodilatation hypotension and a nausea vomiting so it is uh, majority of the setup is replaced by bicarbonate if you see the composition composition is almost same sodium potassium calcium magnesium almost same only in the acetate you see the acetate portion is 35 to 38 but in the bicarbonate which is present is a 35 to 38 otherwise composition is same now what are the advantages and disadvantages of hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis because hemo hemodialysis is a short treatment time 4 hours thrice a week but peritoneal dialysis is long duration of the treatment capd continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis Hemodialysis is highly efficient for small solute removal, and peritoneal dialysis highly effective for large solute removal. Blood pressure is better controlled in peritoneal dialysis. Hemodialysis are usually performed in the dialysis hall, so there are so many patients which are in the dialysis that are coming for dialysis thrice a week. So usually these patients meet with each other and they can discuss their issue. so socialization occur in the dialysis center we can use intra peritoneal solution and dialysis is a source of nutrition and but it is had one good advantage it is the self care form of therapy even it is it can be done at home so coming to the disadvantages hemodialysis Uh, require the anticoagulant and heparin need vascular access in temporary internal jugular catheter ij catheter or femoral catheter in permanent or maintenance hemodialysis and cerebral disease patient require av fistula or av graft hypotension is the usual occur due to fluid removal or ultrafiltration blood pressure fluctuation may occur 
जिस पेशेंट का डाइट एंड ट्रीटमेंट शेड्यूल इफ यू सी द ऑन लेफ्ट साइड द कॉम्प्लिकेशन डिसएडवांटेज ऑफ द पेरिटोन डायलिसिस पेरिटोनाइटिस समटाइम अकर ओबेसिटी बिकॉज ग्लूकोस इज मोर इन दिस पेशेंट डिसलिपिडीमिया इफ द पेशेंट कॉन्ट टेक डाई प्रॉपर डाई ड्यू टू पेरीटोनाइट समटाइम मेल न्यूट्रिशन अकर हरनिया फॉर्मेशन बेड पेन इज द कम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ द और डिसएडवाटेज ऑफ द पेरीटोन डायलिसिस नाउ कमिंग टू द सो वी आर डिस्कस डायलिसिस टाइप्स ऑफ द डायलिसिस इंडिकेशन ऑफ द डायलिसिस फिजियोलॉजिकल प्रिंसिपल ऑफ द डायलिसिस रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर द डायलिसिस सेटअप फॉर डायलिसिस आर ओ सिस्टम डायलिसिस सोल्यूशन देन वाट आर द अक्यूट कम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ द हीमोडायलिसिस बिकॉज आवर टॉपिक इज हीमोडायलिसिस इट्स टाइप एंड कम्प्लिकेशन नाउ कमिंग टू द लास्ट पोर्शन इज द कम्प्लिकेशन मेजर कम्प्लिकेशन इन द हीमोडायलिसिस यूजली सीन इज द हाइपोटेंशन इट इज अ मल्टी फैक्टोरल either due to more ultra filtration removal or more solute removal or due to vasodilatation second is the muscle cramps again due to more ultra filtration more solute removal nausea vomiting can occur in these patients due to dds dallas disequilibrium syndrome headache may occur chest pain and due to line ij catheter sometime fever chills intractable itching sometime occur in these patient due to it is all again multifactorial hyperphosphatemia or due to heparin anticoagulant or due to dialyzer reaction or due to dialysis solution if you can't use the proper anticoagulant clotting may occur or due to low blood flow or problem in the fistula clotting may occur sometime fits seizures can occur in these patient that is also multifactorial hemolysis due to again due to various causes some if the blood pressure shoot up these patient can develop intracranial bleed so infections infectious disease are major cause of morbidity and mortality in patient on long term maintenance hemodialysis we should control the infections what are the factors that contribute to infection because these patients of endocrinal disease are immunocompromised malnutrition diabetes vascular access problem or extra corporeal circulation contamination or we should uh, are not using the disinfection or sterilization or universal precautions are not applied types of the infection vascular ex- excess subclavian or femoral catheter or ij catheter or in permanent av graft av fistula septicemia endocarditis meningitis may occur pyrogen reaction pneumonia infected wound so universal precaution to prevent the infections are any health care worker who might potentially come into contact with body fluid should be educated in infection control and treat all body fluid as though they are potentially infected so we should use the protective barriers protective barriers gloves gowns and masks <clears throat> you see nowadays due to pandemic corona virus these are protective uh, barriers are used uh, masks very important and healthcare worker gown and gloves 
So these three are very important to avoid the contamination or prone to infections. We should properly dispose the needles and we should uh, proper sampling of these things, proper handling of this problem. Now coming to the hypotension that is a common cause, various factors that leads to hypotension. One is related to excessive decrease in blood volume or removal of the more water from the body, ultrafiltration rate. High ultrafiltration, ultrafiltration means removal of the more water from the body. Our target dry weight say too low. Dry weight, concept of dry weight, dry weight means on this weight patient is asymptomatic, no hypotension and patient can perform his routine life uh, and he can eat uh, good. So that is called target dry weight. If you keep low then dialysis technician will remove the more water so patient can develop hypotension. Our dialysis sodium if you keep low so hyponatremia patient can develop hypotension. Other causes when vasodilatation occur or lack of vasoconstruction. I already told you acetate containing dialysis solution. Dialysis solution if it is warm or during, during dilation dialysis if the patient take the food especially in the diabetic patient or autonomic neuropathy splinting vasodilatation occur so hypotension tissue ischemia due to adenosine mediated aggravated by low hematocrit anemic patient autonomic neuropathy Always we should counsel to the patient, you should not take the anti-hypertensive medication and uh, uh, suppose a patient in dialysis in the morning, he or she should avoid the anti-hypertensive medication in the morning dose. After dialysis, when she go to the home, in the evening she should check the blood pressure, if it is high then she should take the dose, otherwise on the day of the dialysis, usually anti hypertension medication should be avoided. Some cardiac factors are ischemic heart disease and uh, drugs and due to left ventricular dysfunction that also leads to hypertension. Uncommon causes hypertension we are discussing detailed hypotension because it is the common cause of acute complication of the hemodialysis. Sometimes uncommon causes pericardial tamponade, myocardial infarction, occult hemorrhage, septicemia, arrhythmia, dialyzer reaction either A or B, anaphylactic hemolysis or air embolism that leads to hypotension. Now, if any patient who develops the hypotension, how will you treat the hypotension? Uh, first of all, prevention of hypotension during dialysis. Ultrafiltration controller should be working or it should be properly checked to remove the water properly or not. Patient education weight gain in the 24 hours less than 1 kg per day they uh, maintain the dry weight dialysis sodium at or above the plasma level a lady told you anti hypertensive medication she should take or he should take after dialysis not before dialysis if patient develop high dialysis. If the patient develop uh, hypotension due to acetate solution, 
then it should be replaced by the bicarbonate and we should reduce the dilated temperature that is 34 to 36 because if the more temperature it causes the vasodilatation hypotension keep the patient hematocrit 25 to 30 percent during dialysis we should avoid the heavy meals and drinks and frequent monitoring of the blood pressure so these are the preventive aspects of hypotension during dialysis now if any patient would develop hypotension how will you manage this patient we should keep the patient the position trendelberg position means head down and leg upwards because the blood circulation due to towards the heart patient it is the best tool to control the hypotension and we should give the saline 0.9 percent bolus 250 not responding 500 we should reduce the transportation rate reduce blood flow and give the oxygen to the patient so these are the management point regarding the hypotension during dialysis after hypotension muscle cramps causes same hypotension light low dry weight low sedum so we should correct blood pressure we should use hypertonic saline or glucose exercise massage sometime in the long term quinine sulfate may be used to prevent the muscle cramps nausea vomiting multifactorial and we should treat the patient symptomatically and anti emetic and we should ask the patient the patient should not take the meals during dialysis itching itching uh, various causes of itching it is a very common but episodic due to uremic toxin xerosis dry skin drug or transfusion reaction dialyzer reactions dialysis solution reactions due to heparin these patients are immunocompromised they can develop the scabies or in the hyperphosphatemia hypocalcemia raised pth means secondary hyperparathyroidism allergens already told you heparin and saline oxide now this is the com acute complication of dialysis sometime patient can develop dialysis disequilibrium syndrome that is called dds basically if you perform the dialysis over anthesis you remove the more solute quickly there is a difference between the tonicity of the csf and extracellular fluid so extracellular fluid you remove the more solute become hypotonic so move to the csf brain cell so it can cause the cerebral edema so patient can develop symptom it depend upon the mild and severe i always give the example of the dialysis dialysis is just like uh, if you initiate the dialysis like aeroplane if you see the aeroplane on the runway first go slowly and take off slowly and gradually when the aeroplane land again slowly and gradually so dialysis is just like that so we should not be over enthusiastic we should not aggressive regarding dialysis so symptom nausea vomiting restlessness headache fits thousand years come and depend upon the severity so prevention always slow initiation initiating of the dialysis how will you manage these patients if they develop reduced blood flow short dialysis session hypertonic sodium or glucose 
इन सीवियर डिसकंटिन्यू डायलिसिस एंड एमरजेंसी में सम टाइम दिस पेशेंट रिक्वायर आईसीयू हीमोलाइसिस आल्सो इन मल्टीफैक्टोरियल ड्यू टू कंटामिनेंट सॉल्यूशन कॉपर क्लोरामाइन नाइट्रेट्स और सम टाइम यू नो द दिस मैकेनिकल ट्रामा दिस ट्यूब स्किन और नीडल ट्रामा so there are multiple uh, drugs that cause hemolysis in this patient this slide show i'm sorry if you know, maybe it is a faded slide but it is very important what are the causes of hemodialysis associated seizures or fits patients are the patient is on dialysis he or she during dialysis may develop fits so what are the causes first we should check the drugs because dialysis removal of anti convulsant the patient one any patient who who uh, has got history of epilepsy and taking the anti epileptic drugs during dialysis the, the these drugs are removed so patient can develop the fits or other drugs metabolic causes some hypocalcemia hypomagnesemia hypoglycemia or hyper osmolality caused by hyperthermia severe acid based disturbances uremic encephalopathy dds hypertension encephalopathy so these are the various contributing factors some cerebral anoxia cardiac arrhythmia sepsis hemorrhage or intracranial bleed patient can develop fits iron deficiency anemia occur in the hemodialysis patient patients due to depletion of the iron stores due to chronic bile loss because in the dialyzer the blood can last up to 120 ml in each session so patient can develop the iron deficiency or decreased dietary intake or iron demand is increased so discussing the acute complication of the hemodialysis then what are the long term complications of the hemodialysis if you can't to do the dialysis properly that is called the adequate dialysis patient can't take the proper dye so patient may develop the anemia normocytic normochromic anemia or iron deficiency anemia or megaloblastic anemia renal osteodystrophy is because hypocalcemia hyperphosphatemia and raised pts that cause secondary hyperparathyroidism sometime tertiary hyperparathyroidism that leads to renal osteodystrophy aluminum toxicity cause again bone problems but nowadays due to good ro system this aluminum toxicity never happens because in reverse osmosis system ultra filtration of the water takes place this aluminum is also filtered so on long term dialysis more than 10 years patient can can develop dialysis renal, re, related renal cyst or dialysis related renal amyloidosis due to deposition of the amyloid tissue in the kidney so other hepatitis can occur if you can't vaccinate these patient properly for prophylaxis vaccination for hepatitis b it is usually done as you know for the hepatitis c there is no vaccine
So what are the manifestation of the beta 2 microglobin amyloidosis? Osteoarthropathies may occur in this patient. Uh, periarthritis in scapula, humeral carpal tunnel syndrome, flexa tenosynovitis. In if is amyloid tissue are deposited in the spine, so destructive spinal arthropathies may occur, and extradural amyloid deposit, bones is pathological fractures. So this is the last slide that shows the these hands you know in the case of the amyloidosis dialysis arthropathies the left synovial tissue shows the amyloid deposition and uh, this slide on the left side the, the deposition of the amyloid kangor red stain is usually used to confirm the amyloid tissue because Congo red has got the penetration and uh, this is, is the presence of amyloid on the bottom is the carpal tunnel syndrome. So this is all of all about regarding the what is dialysis, what are the types of the dialysis and its complications, types and complications we are discussed as a whole in the detail so thank you very much if you ask any question you are most welcome at the department of nephrology